Hey everybody, it's Hummingbird027 here. Today is February 10th, 2014. I'm looking at a picture from some salt mines in Russia. I'm going to take a look at some earthquakes very quickly here. 4.3 in Masset, Canada. Also seeing some earthquake activity in Oklahoma, 2.7 and lots still going on. Puerto Rico area 2.7, 3.4, and a 5.1 in Chile, followed by yesterday Peru seeing a 5.0, and southeast of Easter Island 5.0, 4.9 in Chile, Antarctica pretty quiet today. Greece still having some aftershocks 4.3, and a 4.2 Tajikistan. Also seeing some pretty significant earthquake in Japan, 5.0 and a 4.8. Also off to the side here in Russia, 4.9, 4.7 in Japan. Also seeing a 4.1 in Burma, 4.7 Indonesia. Also a 5.8 Papua New Guinea late last night. I don't think I need to tell anybody to be ready, but folks, 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 as predicted, um, things are getting pretty heated up these days. Tempers are flaring to boiling points, basically. Israeli forces raid Alaska Mosque. We are getting very close to the fulfillment of Psalms 83 and all of those prophecies that go with it. By these escalating events that seem to be going on almost on a weekly to daily basis right now, we could potentially see some massive um, attacks from Hezbollah uh, coming out of Lebanon. Um, because of this provocation, we could be seeing Hamas and the Gaza Strip start to increase their um, persecution against Israelis. Folks, this is what I'm talking about. When I put out the video, Psalms 83, the destruction of Edom and Tyr in the description box below, this is what I was referring to. These failed peace talks is really going to ignite human emotions all around the Middle East. This can lead nowhere but to war. All of the Bible pieces that the Lord has told us is coming together right now, folks. And it was offset in 2006. God showed us through a construction worker who was digging up a, a bog in Ireland, um, came across a 20-page book dated to the years 800 to 1000 AD. While driving his backhoe shovel into the mud, he dug up this Bible, and it was turned, interestingly enough, to Psalms 83. This got international news. It was so big, in fact, they reported on it for a whole week after it was um, discovered. So Psalms 83 was told to us as the next prophetic event by the Lord God Almighty himself. And subsequent prophecies definitely are telling us that all these things are going to be fulfilled very quickly. And once they're fulfilled, um, it sets up Israel to have false peace and security. This is when a lot of false prophets are going to arise all over Israel, um, saying that they are in peace and safety. And then uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 take place. Forever I have told everyone on this channel to watch the Golan Heights. I also ask that you watch Jordan and that you watch Hezbollah in Lebanon. Jordan has now become a huge end time player um, in so much as that they need to be fulfilled. This part of the destruction of Edom um, will need to be fulfilled before the tribulation begins because at the midst of the tribulation, when the Jews finally realize that they have been worshiping the wrong Messiah, they need to flee to Amman and South Jordan in order to get away 
from the Antichrist and his extreme persecution. Indeed, it will be like the Holocaust all over again for the Jewish people. Um, they will need to leave um, Israel as soon as possible. And so southern Jordan, I believe, is where this exodus is going to take place at the midst of the tribulation. But Jordan will no longer be in power anymore. And that's why Israel will be able to run for safety in her hills because there will be nobody to contest the influx of refugees into Jordan at that point. So what happens with Jeremiah 49 verses 34 to the end of the chapter dealing with Iran? We see Iran just in the last few days make some arrogant responses even after America has freed up billions of dollars for these people and indeed I'll show you in a few more articles here that Russia is also pouring forth a billions of dollars into Iran they're getting pretty prideful at this point and by flaunting their pride I had been reporting on this last month um, that after the Iranian delegation was not approved to attend the Geneva II conferences, the very first part of it, that they were only allowed to sit in the sidelines and that way they were not actually able to take part in the discussions. They threw a temper tantrum and sent their fleet out into the Atlantic. Well, they've been working closer and closer to unbeknownst Americans who are asleep at the wheel as usual. And for the first time, the Iranian warships that were dispatched into the Atlantic Ocean in January will finally get close enough to the U.S. maritime borders for the first time, stated a senior Iranian naval commander on Saturday. For this morning, I have been up since like 2.30 in the morning Mountain Standard Time and God has laid it on my heart to really look into this. Um, since there has been proven Hezbollah forces in Mexico and areas such as this, including Iran's growing ties with Cuba and Venezuela, um, it's getting very interesting that they're inching very close to North America, folks. It's not going to take very much to put America back into the 18th century by an EMP attack. Um, I have been thinking about a Faraday cage uh, for a lot of my electronics. I just wanted to mention that in case any of you out there are thinking similar thoughts and have not done so already. You may want to figure out a way by getting on the internet and doing some research how to secure your electronics via a Faraday cage. So while we wait to see what the U.S. response is to this unprovoked Iranian aggression, the only one who's literally saying anything, especially our ally Israel, the only voice in the world that's actually standing up for Americans, Thank you, Prime Minister Netanyahu. Our own regime won't even stand up for us, but Israel PM slams Iran's move to send ships towards the U.S. Israel on Sunday denounced an Iranian announcement that it was sending naval ships towards the U.S. as further evidence that loosening sanctions on Tehran was counterproductive. This is a duh moment, okay, folks? Duh. The move to send warships to the Atlantic was announced by the commander of Iran's northern naval fleet on Saturday, who described it as a message, wants to send America a message, but they're not getting it somehow. These two ships, a destroyer and a helicopter transport port vessel, has been dispatched since January 21st and it is not clear how close the ships would travel towards the U.S. maritime border or when they would arrive. And folks, they should know this information and be sharing it with the American public ASAP because obviously this is a security threat, right, to our nation's security. But Prime Minister 
Benjamin Netanyahu said the dispatch of the warships was clear evidence of Iran's aggression and proof it had not moderated its policies following the landmark deal with world powers to roll back its nuclear program in exchange for sanctions relief. The easing of sanctions against Iran by the international community has not caused Iran to moderate its international aggression. The complete opposite has occurred, Netanyahu told the weekly cabinet meeting. And the top Iranian naval commander is also threatening to destroy the U.S. warships and kill American soldiers. Um, obviously, his statement of the Americans can sense by all means how their warships will be sunk with 5,000 crews and forces in combat against Iran and how they should find its hulk in the depths of the sea. These are words of war folks. And along with such rantings, this video came out. Uh, you can find it at thebarenakedislam.com in the description box below. This almost a minute long video shows how Iran would send missiles into Tel Aviv and Haifa to destroy them if Israel was to attack Iran. Other videos that are hour, that's about an hour long, um, shows them also attacking cities in America. So we are looking at the fulfillment in time of Jeremiah 49 verses 34 to the end of the chapter. Um, I believe they will be one of the last ones to go before this false peace and safety ends up um, coming to Israel, which will set them up for Ezekiel 38 and 39 of Gog's invasion from the north. But there's going to come a point here very, very soon, folks, and you can quote me on this, where Israel's just going to get tired of fighting these tiny little disturbances, should I say, from um, the proxies of Iran. This article pretty much fulfills <laughs> all of this talk this morning. Iran spreads its war wings. Hezbollah deepens role in Syria. Israel, Syria, Lebanon, regions in conflict. I believe Hezbollah is going to ignite the Psalms 83 confederacy. When we look at Zechariah chapter 9, we are dealing also with Zephaniah chapter 2, which talks about Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, and all these areas along the coast freaking out that Tyr has been destroyed. Could this be what sends Jordan over the edge and calling forth a confederacy of Arab nations against Israel? I'm going to show you some startling articles about Jordan very soon here, but for now, in a fundamental policy makeover, IRGC High Command has resolved to deepen the Lebanese Hezbollah intervention in the Syrian civil war. With wide repercussions on the stability of Lebanon and the Syrian and Lebanese borders with Israel, this is the purpose of Al-Qaeda. Deb Kafail's military and intelligence sources are reporting that it embodies the latest decision by Khomeini to strictly separate Tehran's approach to international nuclear diplomacy opposite the U.S. with its intervention in regional conflicts via Syria, Lebanon, and the Palestinians, and direct confrontations with Israel. Folks, if you want to watch the video, I put up about everything you are reading right here and right now. It's Psalms 83. The destruction of Edom and Tyr in the description box below. Indeed, I state in the video, this is probably my last extra video that I'm going to do because I believe that's how close we are to the rapture of the bride. While negotiations resume in Geneva today, February 10th, for ending the Syrian war, um, there is going to be a sealed off and a separate policy compartment from the Islamic Republic's 
pursuit of its regional goals in the war arena of Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. Assad and Nasrallah were notified of this change last week. It first surfaced in a call to arms by Hezbollah's second-in-command, this Sheikh Qasim, which is reported to have drawn 5,000 new Shiite volunteers in its first push. The new intake will receive military train training and crash courses for missions in Lebanon and higher levels of combat instruction for the Syrian battlefield. Qasem announced in a pep speech in Beirut, we will continue our work and remain in the field committed to our political stances. We will remain fighting where we are fighting we are a resistance wherever we are, a resistance against Israel and its agents and a resistance fighting in Syria in defense of the resistance. Ezekiel 27, especially in verse 2, and then in 27, Yahweh tells Ezekiel to take up a lamentation for tear. Then in verse 27, we read, Your riches, wares, and merchandise, your mariners and pilots, your caulkers and merchandisers, all of your men of war who are in you, this is Hezbollah, and the entire company which is in your midst, will fall into the midst of the sea on the day of your ruin. Friends, time is running out on Tyre, Lebanon. Cry unto Yahweh for salvation. And is it a wonder that in verses 24 through 26, And there shall no longer be a pricking briar or a painful thorn for the house of Israel from among all who are around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am sovereign Yahweh. Thus says sovereign Yahweh, when I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered, and am hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land which I gave to my servant Jacob, and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am Yahweh, their Mighty One. So is Sheikh Qasem's pep speech um, plausible? Does it have any bite to it? Is it a pricking briar? Of course, it's clear. The organization will continue fighting in Syria while buttressing its positions in Lebanon and persevering in its resistance against Israel and its agents. The speech was also meant to raise the morale of Lebanon's three million Shiites who are down in the dumps as they are facing bombing attacks by Al-Qaeda-linked terrorists. There is also an article, I believe it's in the description box this morning, about how Lebanon is even a worse place than Baghdad right now because of all of the bombings and attacks by Al-Qaeda-linked terrorists. And please do not forget that in mid-January, Foreign Minister, Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif, um, basically set up Lebanon to start getting a lot more funding and a lot more training. As I also talked about in the Psalms 83 video in the description box below, Jordan now has until 2015 to basically do a lot of harm against Israel and the United Nations Security Council. And indeed, I think because of Obadiah 1 and 3, actually verses 1 through 3, tells us that Edom's going to misabuse their power and bring try to bring destruction against Israel. Well, it's happening, folks. This just blows my mind how accurate the Holy Bible is and the word of the Lord is true. Two articles here for your consideration. Jordan and the EU urge more Arab states to join the Agadir Agreement or Agadir Agreement. Uh, are we looking at the formation of the Psalms 83, or is this just getting started? 
When I talk about Bible prophecy, and especially in mapping, I talk about looking at the language of the Bible, not necessarily uh, the backdrop of what's going on in the Bible, but the language, because all of the language is coming from a single source, from Lord Yahweh himself. And he is telling us key things, key events that we need to look for. Indeed, little red flag wording. This would be one of those moments. Jordan and the EU on Thursday called um, the Arab Mediterranean countries to join the Agadir free trade agreement between the Kingdom, Egypt, Tunisia, and Morocco. Jordan encourages other Arab countries on the Mediterranean to join this agreement as it would boost economic integration between Arab states. Isn't that nice that it's only Arab states that get to join this agreement? Notice that this is the third phase of financial support offered by the EU to get this agreement going. Isn't the EU forcing, forcing now a boycott on and calling for a boycott on Israel and the international community? Folks, is Psalms 83 staring at us in the face here? Why would the EU be calling for a boycott of Israel when they're setting up this ginormous market of 120 million people, noting that the gross domestic product of member countries is estimated at 150 billion Euros. Since this agreement went into effect in 2006, the EU has been supervising its implementation due to belief it would accelerate economic development of the region, the one world global government, and its one world economic structure coming to light right before our eyes, folks. Notice that this agreement, this is huge, folks. This agreement is open to further membership by all Arab countries that are members of the Arab League and the Greater Arab Free Trade Arena and linked to the EU through the Associate Agreement or an FTA. The agreement proposed is to facilitate integration between the Arab states and the EU. This is its purpose. By this agreement, they will be able to form a confederacy against Israel. Did you just get God bumps or what, folks? Are we there? Is Bible prophecy fulfilling itself before our eyes? Are you ready? This little girl's ready. Are you? And Jordan is falling right in line with the international community. Obadiah 1 verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Jordanian parliament against recognizing Israel as a Jewish state. The statements by the Jordan's lower house of parliament, meanwhile, followed a debate last week over the peace process and clarified the need for an independent, fully sovereign Palestinian state with 67 borders, blah, blah, blah. This ain't going to happen, folks. This is not Daniel 9 and 27. I'm sorry that people are looking for the Antichrist instead of looking for Jesus Christ. Folks, it's not going to happen. These prophecies of Psalms 83, Jeremiah 49, Isaiah 17 must be fulfilled. As Zephaniah chapter 2 tells us, before, 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 before the day of the Lord begins. The house called for the return and compensation of the Palestinian refugees. In addition, the final agreement should take Jordan's interest into account concerning refugees, Jerusalem, security, water, and settlement. Israel has made it a condition that everybody must agree that Jews have a Jewish state. And the House voices its appreciation and backing of the earnest efforts that Jordan, under the Kings of Jordan leadership here, exerts in defense of the Arab identity of Jerusalem and its firm stand against 
all the Israeli measures and decisions aimed at obliterating Jer Jerusalem's Arab Islamic character as well as the Zionist design of hegemony and expansion carried out daily against Palestine and Jerusalem in particular they finished in their statement they will not give Israel anything that she asks and indeed war must come in order for Israel to stand Jordan's king will start its US visit on Monday after concluding its visit to Mexico something very interesting happened while he was in Mexico which I think it's very weird that he was there to begin with but it's just me there's an interesting article where is the king according to a published reports Abdullah's helicopter departed from Mexico City on its way to Veracruz with a scheduled stop in Cordoba the airport to refuel the pilot was unable to land there and instead he landed in a baseball field in a nearby town it was stated that they experienced a hard landing due to shortage of fuel and while they were there the appearance of two top high-ranking Mexican officials the Federal Secretary of Navy Marina Mexico and the Secretary of National Defense at the baseball field has fueled many speculations they arrived within minutes for this unscheduled landing um, presents a number of questions that are remaining unanswered what was Abdullah King of Jordan doing in this baseball field meeting with the Federal Secretary of Navy of Mexico and the Secretary of National Defense that's really weird and it took the royal court more than 35 hours to issue a statement that failed to clarify the circumstances surrounding the incident and assured the public of the king's safety of course they did so what were they all talking about there folks <laughs> could it be that Hezbollah is like hanging out in Mexico ready to attack Americans hello are y'all awake alright going to fly through quite a few articles to shorten this newscast up quite a bit um, look to the description box below if you want to read these for yourself Netanyahu to meet with Obama in Washington in March the meeting is scheduled for five days in the first week of March during which he will meet with President Barack Hussein Obama and deliver an address to the annual APAC policy conference all right coming out of Joel Rosenberg's wordpress.com site with all eyes on Putin during Sochi Olympics Russian leader builds closer ties with the terror regime in Iran so Forbes magazine named Putin the world's most powerful person now with the Olympics and Sochi underway the eyes of the world are riveted on Russia and its leader who has invested a record 51 billion dollars in creating what they hope will prove a dazzling showcase to reassert Russian power amidst the themes of peace and safety or peace and harmony Putin is simultaneously working hard to build closer ties with Iran the world's most radical Islamist terror regime Iran and Russia are negotiating an oil for good swap worth 1.5 billion dollars that's a month that would enable Iran to lift oil exports substantially Saudi Arabia is calling for an urgent UN meeting on Syria points out at crimes against humanity I do believe that Isaiah 17 is being looked at here as Saudi Arabia has called for an emergency meeting over what is happening in Syria citing growing evidence pointing to war crimes they are talking about the recent um, evacuation of Homs and the people there and how the Syria's Red Crescent 
is unable to deliver food and medical aid to certain areas, the rebel-held areas in Han. And huge crowds gather for 10th week of anti-government rallies in central Kiev. And Mr. Obama not waiting a moment to start with his shove down the throats of the American people executive orders. Climate hubs now, courtesy of executive orders. The question now is whether we will have the courage to act before it's too late. And how we answer will have a profound impact on the world we leave behind, not just to you, but to your children and your grandchildren. As a president and father and as an American, I'm here to say we need to act. This is President Hussein Obama's announcement on his climate plan from 6-25-13. And so it has come to pass as a threat to Congress um, if it does not bow to his will with this week's Senate passage of the Farm Bill. Um, now via an executive order, Barack Hussein Obama has created seven regional so-called climate hubs claiming they will help farmers and rural communities respond more successfully to the risks and effects of climate change. This is basically Agenda 21 in full time action right now, folks. They are going to get rid of everyone's ability to feed themselves. That way you will be totally subsistent on the government for handout food. Might I add that it's unhealthy GMO food from Monsanto. Egypt and Ethiopia to resume talks today on the Grand Renaissance Dam. This is Isaiah 19 coming to fulfillment as we look, folks, verses 5 through 10. Just a quick note, Operation American Spring is predicting violence if Obama does not resign. Patriots for American leader Colonel retired Harry Riley predicted there would be a violent condition in the U.S. if the demands of his Operation American Spring protests are not met. Um, they will meet and march in Washington, D.C. on May 16th and demand the resignation of Barack Hussein Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, and other democratically elected office holders. A Danish zoo has killed a healthy giraffe to feed lions. Poisoned, vomiting, hospitalized West Virginia children, closed schools, media is still censoring the word poison being used on these kids. There has also been a recall of 9 million pounds of meat that was not fully inspected. Um, this is mostly in California. This was pretty gross. The inspector found that these cows were diseased and unsound animals that should never have been sent to the butcher. I have to admit it, folks. As much as I love America, I have considered actually leaving America especially with all of the national ID card that's going to come into play. America is going to become a prison country. I don't know if you all understand what I'm talking about, but because of biometrics, you will not be able to actually leave America unless you are processed through the system and therefore have a passport that has an RFID chip in it. You name it, folks. So... Americans are renouncing their citizenship in record numbers. Three times more Americans gave up on America in 2013 than in 2012. The WSJ reports last year saw a record number of U.S. taxpayers um, expatriations, while exceptionalism and living an American dream remains cornerstone of maintaining U.S. citizenry view of the world, it seems everything from tax code changes to spying droves, uh, almost 3,000 people into the hands of their passports last year, above all, 
fear seems to be driving this increase. Could it be because we are living in an anti-Christal bestial system right now here in America? Folks, here's another deadline of which he's Barack Hussein Obama in charge will probably ram down even more executive orders in order to save everyone from the debt deadline of February 27. The U.S. Treasury just introduced extraordinary measures. What heroes? Okay, sarcastic as I can possibly be, what heroes? The U.S. Treasury on Friday was forced to enact emergency measures after spending its borrowed time and money. By month's end, Uncle Sam's piggy bank will be down to just $50 billion. By now, hard-ringing warnings that the U.S. Treasury is about to go bust brings to mind the story of the little boy who cried wolf so many times that everyone eventually ignored him. This is the tragedy that America is going to face under its judgment from God is that everybody's ignoring it because they're throwing the same old stuff in their face every day. Under the budget agreement passed by Congress in October, the debt limit was suspended on February 7th. Beginning on Saturday, the debt limit goes back to its current level of $17.2 trillion. This is a fake number in case nobody really knows that. And part of the extraordinary measures taking place now because they've allowed this to blossom into the mismanagement and horror of America's economy. The extraordinary measures like sending investments in the retirement funds of federal employees, for example, they suspend them. I'm telling you folks, if you don't do something with your retirement fund, you're going to lose it. They will confiscate it just like they did in Argentina multiple times. Worst in decades, 11 dead and 1,200 have been injured. Japan's newest snowstorm, the heaviest snowstorm in nearly half a century in Tokyo and other parts of Japan have caused a rash of incidences, accidents, and deaths. As you can see, some places are seeing almost 18 inches of snow. That's quite a bit for this area. This was kind of a pretty picture of the Imperial Palace as snow falls in Tokyo on the 8th. California bill proposes enabling kill switches on smartphones by 2015. The state of California has introduced a bill that will require mobile devices to have kill switch which could render them inoperable and impossible to reset if stolen or if they just don't like what you're talking about on the phone. If passed, Senate Bill 962 would require every smartphone sold in or shipped to California to have the mechanism installed by as early as January 2015, with smartphone manufacturers given until June of this year to come up with solutions for integrating this technology into their devices. If you have not subscribed to Raiders News Update. It's Tom Horn's site. They have lots of interesting information on there. I also get a lot of these articles from that site, which I would normally not find because they search for these things uh, more than I do. Mine's mostly on the Middle East. DARPA plans to hunt down human traffickers using the deep web. Memex its new planned supercomputer is a departure from DARPA's usual robots and drones. Perhaps you've heard of DARPA, the Department of Defense sci-fi offshoot known for its robot hummingbirds. Nothing replaces the hummingbirds. And mind-controlled artificial arms. Earlier this week, the Virginia-based agency put out a curious announcement it wants to find human traffickers using a specially developed supercomputer. DARPA announced that it was soliciting proposals 
for innovative research to maintain technological superiority in the area of con content indexing and web search on the internet. Uh, the program, DARPA is calling it Mimex, borrows its name from Vannevar Bush's classic 1945 article, As We May Think. This article envisions a world in which computers will one day be able to access the collective memories of every human being on the planet. You can look at the full proposal here at the vocative.com in the PDF. I would like to close this newscast with just not a word of warning, but I do want to stress how important it is for you to have a correct heart before the Lord, that you are found holy and blameless. These are requirements in order for God to collect you from this world. Folks, we must be living this way because at a moment we do not know he is going to come and take his people out of the earth his bride um, in order for the church age to come to a close and that the wicked will eventually um, in a very short period of time be judged um, and be cleansed this whole world is coming to cleansing just like the days of Noah before the flood came Noah preached to probably thousands, if not millions of people in what is supposed to be a hundred years that he spent building a ship and ministering to people. Um, <laughs> and nobody but eight people were saved, folks. It's time to get right. Be like this little girl here. Are you ready? Psalms 83 is forming before our eyes and then it's just going to cascade one event right after another. Tehran, Damascus, Hezbollah, these are all a grave threat to Israel. We need to keep Israel in our prayers always, the peace of Jerusalem, and also be praying for our leaders, folks. Um, they're the ones who are making these decisions, and we we need to do our part and pray that God will call them um, and take them out of this world, um, i.e. through repentance and turning away from their evil ways and godly sorrow. Folks, you never want to hear the words of Matthew 7 and 23 spoken to you and your person and then I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity Jesus is talking about professing Christians he's literally talking to us if we are sinning if we are transgressing if we have iniquity in us God wants nothing to do with us. He cannot tolerate sin, iniquity, or transgressions in his presence. And who can blame him, folks? It's nasty. And look what it does to your life and what it does to everybody else's life. We should ever keep those sins in our mind's eye, knowing what God saved us from why we turned away from our evil self, from that part of us that we don't want anymore. God gave us a way to turn away from that person, to be created new. We have a new person growing inside of us that's going to be birthed out here at the rapture of the bride. We definitely need to be separate from the world. We need to become a peculiar people for the Lord. Just dwell on those words for a little while in your contemplations of God. What is peculiar that God and the world are so different? Who will be able to stand before the Lord when he comes? King David had this very same question 
and he also gave an answer to it. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Romans 8 and 1 also clarifies this. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. When you get tired of trying to please men, mankind in general, um, where do you go? Who do you go to to really be a true servant? Because that's initially what the essence of a human being is, is to be of service. Don't you feel really good when you are of service to another human being? The joy you get for helping an old lady cross the street or rescuing a child from an oncoming car in the road. Folks, being of service is innate in us. This is what we are as human beings. But what kind of service are we giving? Are we here to please man and all their wants and needs that are totally unfulfillable um, to all eternity? They, they can never be fulfilled because it's, it's a bottomless pit. There is no way to please mankind. None. But there is to please God. By faith, it pleases God to see that we are walking in faith with him. When you begin to walk in the spirit, you no longer want to live according to the flesh. You no longer want to live the worldly life. And you don't want to please mankind. You no longer want to fulfill the desires of your flesh. But indeed, we have a flight mechanism, which means that we want to flee from all sin and evil. That becomes an innate part of this new creation in us. There are a lot of things taking place right now, and a lot of people can get pulled off of the path by one simple statement. A lot of that has to do with Israel right now and the hatred that is being fostered against her. Um, folks, the Lord is going to deal with Israel in the tribulation. Those people who do not believe that the Messiah has come and gone already are going to learn by the Lord himself moving his people into this knowledge that they've made a serious error on their part and I'm asking those of you who view this channel to not make the same um, serious error that could get you left behind folks we should not have hatred in our hearts when the Lord comes back he wants to be finding a people who are doing his will who are faithful the rapture of the bride is a reward for the faithful. A lot of people comment on this channel and they send me very nasty emails and such that Israel is no longer um, God's people and they're just messed up in their theology. They have no idea who Yahweh really is and what he's doing with mankind. Do not let the Lord come back and find anger in your heart or on your mind. This is why the Church of Philadelphia, brotherly love, will be taken out of the time of trials that are coming on this world. I'm going to finish off with this quick word from David Wilkerson, the revelation of God's glory. Once we receive the revelation of God's glory, we cannot continue in our old ways of treating others. That must all change. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be you kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. 
Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. God is telling us through Paul, You have seen my glory, and you know my nature and character, that I am gracious, ready to forgive. Now I want you to express to others who I am. Even though Moses had this revelation of God's glory, at one point he misrepresented it to the people. He grew impatient with Israel over their disobedience, and he angrily struck a rock with his staff, as if to say, you stiff-necked bunch of rebels. God didn't take kindly to that at all. Once he reveals to you his glory, his kindness, goodness, grace, and mercy, his patience will not endure your misrepresenting his glory to others. Now Moses had misrepresented that glory to Israel, and as a result, Moses, one of the meekest, godliest figures in the Old Testament, was kept out of God's fullness. Very powerful, powerful lesson here, folks. This lesson is also taught to us in Matthew 7, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Not everyone who um, does things for the Lord, lives for the Lord, is going to go to the kingdom of heaven, folks. He said it himself. Even Moses, for all that he had done for the Lord, messed up right there towards the end. Right as soon as he was ready to walk right into the promised land, he messed up big time. We all face this horrific moment of our lives where we fall flat on our face. Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land. We find another illustration of this in one of Jesus's parables. He speaks of a servant who was forgiven a great debt by his master. The master showed his this man incredible kindness grace and forgiveness, yet no sooner was the servant forgiven than he found a man, man who owed him a small debt and he began choking the debtor until he paid up. The very one who had experienced great love and forgiveness showed no mercy in return. Jesus is saying in this parable, you're misrepresenting the love of the Father. He is giving you a touch of his incredible glory through his kindness and the forgiveness of your sins. Yet now that you've seen his glory, you are misrepresenting it to the world. This summed up in Paul's command, be merciful to others, even as he has been merciful to you. I know that many of you are getting tired of all the hatred and terrible comments and things being made, but be of good cheer, everyone, because our Lord is coming, and with an innocent heart as that of a child, um, approaching our Lord like a child, we're going to enter heaven. This is the key. God didn't leave us without the key to the kingdom, did he? This is what's talked about in the Philadelphian Church of Revelation chapter 3. And it states in verse 7, To the angel from the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. And to show you a little bit of cross-referencing here, which I call mapping, 1 John 5 and 20 and 21 is very interesting relating to this verse. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. 
and we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And 21, little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Also, seeing a reference to Key in Isaiah 22 and 22, I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David, what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Also, First Chronicles 9 and 27, they would spend the night stationed around the house of God. Do you catch that? Because they had to guard it, and they had charge of the key for opening it each morning. This should be a total red flag for you. Because who are the priests and kings of the Lord? They are stationed in the house of God. And um, very interestingly enough, those Levites who were not holy were not allowed in the house of God or to be stationed around it. We can read in Numbers 3 and 38, Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp to the east of the tabernacle towards the sunrise in front of the tent of meeting, they were responsible for the care of the sanctuary on behalf of the Israelites. Anyone else who approached the sanctuary was to be put to death. Also, First Chronicles 23, 30-32, they were also to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord. They were to do the same in the evening. And whenever burnt offerings were presented to the Lord on Sabbaths and at new moon festivals and at appointed feasts, they were to serve the Lord regularly in the proper number and in the way prescribed for them. And so the Levites carried out their responsibilities for the tent of meeting for the holy place and under their brothers, the descendants of Aaron, for the service of the temple of the Lord. What the Lord has expected in the past of the Levites, he expects of his people now, his peculiar people. That's us, folks, um, the kings and priests that will be in his millennial kingdom. It's getting closer, everyone. Day by day, we see articles um, seemingly shaping Bible prophecy <laughs> as it just keeps getting more intense in the Middle East. We need to keep our eyes continually focused on Jesus and nothing else, no one else but Jesus, because if we take our eyes off of him for a second, we could be swept away from the straight and narrow path, and we could be in a place where we do not want to be, like Moses, with an emotional burst, you know, he didn't get to go into the promised land. That's how serious of time that we are all in right now. This is why Christ told us repeatedly in the New Testament to be on guard, keep watching, and keep humbling ourselves before the Lord. This is the time where we need to be in a moment-to-moment -moment prayer with the Lord at all times. Because if we don't, Satan is going to come and devour us. We need each other more than ever, lifting each other up, not tearing each other down. I hope this message has blessed you and it keeps you looking skyward. God bless you all, everyone. Maranatha.